Hello, hello, all my beautiful brothers and sisters in Christ. My name is Pastor Noreen Aguirre, author of Golly Dreams, Your Seat at the Table. And today is Tuesday. Today is Tuesday. I come live as the Holy Spirit leads me, but normally I come live on Facebook every Tuesday and I bring you whatever the Holy Spirit places in my heart to share. Um, Lately, I've been doing the messages that I do on Sunday. I come up and I uh, go over them with you guys on Tuesday. Praise God. So if you guys have any questions, mm -hmm. if you guys are needing prayer as you guys have me live on here, feel free to message me down below. Thank you for joining me. I ask that you please share this message so that it will be a blessing to someone else. Praise God. Hallelujah. So um, welcome all my brothers and sisters in Christ. As you guys are coming on in, I'm just going to pray really quick and just allow the Holy Spirit to just take over, take over this gathering for him be the glory. Praise God. Father God, we thank you, Lord, once again, Lord Jesus, to be able to just share who you are and all that you do, Father God. Father God, I ask that you take hold of this message. I ask that you deliver it for you be the glory, for you be the honor, Father God. I pray that you open every single person that's tuning in, open up their hearts to receive you, dear Lord. Open up their minds for wisdom and understanding that can only come from you, Father God. Father God, I thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father God. I pray for no distractions, Father God. I pray for your peace. Father God, I just pray that they they receive this message as it's you yourself, Holy Spirit. God, wow, the presence of the Lord is coming strong. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Confirmation. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So I just pray, Father God, that they receive this message that it's you, Father God, speaking to them. You speaking to your children, Father God, you deliver this message. To you be the glory, to you be the honor. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. Hello, all my beautiful brothers and sisters. Hi. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Praise God. It's nice and a blessing to have you guys on here. I ask that you guys please hit the share button so that way it's a blessing to someone else that's tuning in as well. Or also share it through your text message. Hello. Hello. God bless you guys. Welcome. My name is Pastor Noreen Aguirre. For those who do not know me, I am the pastor of Zion Spirit Filled Church. Um, we're located right now in Melrose Park area, but we're establishing our church and the Lord has given me a huge vision and that's where we're doing. We're walking in the vision that the Lord has given me for 2019. Praise God. And that is to do have a church out of a barn. That's the vision he's given me, to do a church out of a barn. Praise God. <laughs> and I am excited. I'm so excited for this year, what, what he's going to do through this ministry. Praise God. And so this message that I'm going to be sharing with you, it's entitled Stuck. And for those who can relate to that word stuck, I know... I know all of us been there. I know all of us can relate to the word. I know all of us can relate to the feeling, the frustration of being stuck either in your job, your relationship, finances, your health, maybe even your faith with God. We can all relate to that word being stuck and feeling stuck and the frustration of being stuck. Remaining stuck is only a perception. Praise God. Remaining stuck is only a, per a perception. Is the ability to, to see, hear, or become aware of something through senses. So, um, but this is not, you know, the, it's not the actual reality. It's just a perception of how you feel. So you may feel like you're in a hole, but you're really not in a hole. Praise God. So it depends on how you're receiving it, how you're seeing it. Praise God. So now the not so good news, because a lot of people don't like change, but actually feeling stuck is, is, is a something, some is, is a sign that something needs to change in your life. Praise God. So feeling stuck is a sign that something needs to change in your life. You might have the impulse to make the, those changes, but resist in doing so for fear, fear, fear of change. And fear is one of one of the most powerful um, forces that that that's in our life that it keeps us from doing a lot of things. It keeps us. It affects the decisions you make, the actions you take, the outcome you achieve, 
who you are and what you do has one point or, an or another been influenced by fear. And while the primary role of fear is to protect you, fear very often becomes a significant obstacle that stands between you and your goal. Being successful relies to a large extent on knowing how to deal with your fear, praise God, is really knowing how to deal with your fear. And I'm going to dive right into mm -hmm. Second Tim Second Timothy 1, verse 7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind, praise God. But many of us struggle with, it, with our faith, suffering from severe trials, there is no faith, my brothers and sisters, there is no faith worth having that has not been tested by fire. Glory be to God. Listen to what Peter says, and he clearly knows from experience. First Peter 1 verse 7. These trials show that your faith is genuine. It brings, it's, it's being tested as fire tests, tests and purifies gold. Though your faith is far more precious than mere gold. So when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. Praise God. I just love God's word. Look at Jeremiah, for instance. Jeremiah, the weeping prophet. Jeremiah was called by God around 626 BC and was one of the most tender-hearted prophets that Israel ever had. His heart broke for the nation who refused to listen to God's word given to, given to him. through uh, They rejected every single word of his prophecy and listened to those who gave good news. Even though it turned out to be false in Jeremiah 43, Jeremiah knew that these false prophets were only saying what the people wanted to hear, much like the modern watered-down gospel that is being preached from behind many pulpits today. Jeremiah's mission was one, was to turn the nation of Judea towards repentance and to rid the nation of idolatry, praise God, which had spread throughout the land. Sadly, God had already told Jeremiah that the people would not listen to him and will be sent into captivity. And this is in Jeremiah 7, verse 27 and 14, verse 12. There was nothing that Jeremiah could do to pursue the people. And this made Jeremiah lament even more over the nation, nation's rebellion towards God. There was, there was no shortage lined up against Jeremiah and his life was sought after frequent, frequently in Jeremiah 11, 21 through 23. And more than once, they tried to stone him to death. Jeremiah was grieved over the perception that his uh, prophecy caused and he became a laughing stock, the target of frequent mocking in Jeremiah 20 verse 7. But he knew that he couldn't keep God's word to himself, glory be to God, in Jeremiah 29, even if it meant long-term imprisonment. And this is what something that happened to him as well. There was a certain, um, it's, it's actually a tank that is used to put either water or maybe even the definition could be as um, part of a flushing toilet. So it's kind of like a, this, this big hole that they store stuff in it, like water or even like, like I said, taps of, of parts of a flushing toilet. This was of Malachi, the king's son, which was in, in the court of the guard, letting Jeremiah down by rope. And there was no water in the certain, but only mud. And Jeremiah sank in the mud in Jeremiah 38, 6. If anyone faced hopeless struggles, it was Jeremiah. But even though he faced such a, a hard trial and everything that he went through, he knew that God would deliver him someday and knew that he would prosper him. Praise God. Hallelujah. He, which gave him much hope in Jeremiah 29, 11. 
This is the time, my brothers and sisters, I believe we're living in now. The time where people do not want to hear the truth. The time where people are rebelling, rebellion, they're rebelling against God, God's word, um, what God is doing. They, they want to hear that feel good message. That message is going to help them feel good. They don't want to hear the truth. They don't want to hear things that's going to convict them. That's why, you know, many of the churches, I mean, you would, you would see, People should be really running to the churches and being involved in what God is doing. Praise God. If you believe in God, I mean, God should be part of your everyday life 24-7. Glory be to God. And not just once a week, if that. Glory be to God. So Mark 8, 18 says, Having eyes, do you not see? Having ears, do you not hear? Praise God. And do you not remember? Hallelujah. My brothers and sisters, I'm going to share with you right now about eight steps to teach you how to get unstuck. Glory be to God. Eight steps that's going to help you get unstuck. Again, you may be feeling stuck in your, in your job, in your relationship, in your finances, your health, your faith with God. We're going to break free from all of that. Glory be to God. Number one, and I'm saying it really fast because I have a lot that I'm throwing at you and I want you guys to get this. If you guys want to go over it, go over it later. Please hit that share button so somebody else could be blessed by this message. Praise God. So here's eight steps. Try to write it down so you can remember to help you get unstuck. Praise God. You don't know what you want. You don't know what you want. Most of us feel stuck because we focus on what isn't going well, leaving little room to focus on what we want. As we seek the Lord and spend time in His presence, our eyes will begin to open. We'll be able to see things more clearly, making room to be able to focus on the desires of our heart that's in Christ Jesus. Praise God. Romans 7, 15 through 16. I do not understand what I do. For what I, for what I want to do, I do not do. But what I hate to do, I do. Praise God. Hallelujah. So what do we do? What do we do? Instead of focusing on what isn't working, focus on finding answers. And I'm going to ask you guys to repeat after me. Praise God. I am willing. And for those who want to type it along, type it so I know you're following along with me. Repeat these after me. I am willing to live my life in new ways and trusting God every step of the way. Praise God. I am willing to live my life in new ways and trusting God every step of the way. Hallelujah. If you, if you said that with me, please type it. Let me know we're on the same page. Praise God. I am willing to live my life in new ways and trusting God every step of the way. Glory be to God. As you do this, you will start to shift your focus to seek God and new opportunities, hallelujah, that will give you more clarity. We actually always know what we want, but sometimes we have to dig a little bit. Sometimes we have to dig a little bit for it, praise God. As a, Number two, as a child of God, you have different values of those who are in the world. Simple as that. You're not going to have the same desires of those who are living in the world, praise God value, something that brings importance to you, something that you hold high standard that's important to you in your life. Praise God. So, so what, you guys are following along with me so far? So what once made you happy, glory be to God, may have shifted. Something that made you happy before as, a, as you become to begin to seek God and give your life to God, that maybe has shifted. And I know for sure it shifts because you become a new creation. Praise God for the glory be to God. John 17, 16, they are not of this world, even as I am not of this world. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your word. So the things we used to like, doing we no longer like doing them anymore the lord starts giving us the desires of his heart we become one we become connected praise god thank you jesus so what do we do what do we do recognize that you have desires goals and beliefs that are important to you your values matter and when they shift it is because something inside of you has awakened and it is ready to experience more instead of feeling like something is wrong embrace Embrace your new set of values and start seeking out new people and new places that are going to support them. Praise God. Hallelujah. Number three, you don't find joy where you used to find it. 
You don't find joy where you used to find it. And again, I'm talking to my brothers and sisters in Christ, to people who who given their life to Jesus, who accept Jesus as, as their Lord and Savior, because you, you are going to connect with what I'm saying, praise God. And if you haven't at the end, I will do a salvation prayer so that we're all on the same page. Glory be to God. Number three, you don't find joy where you used to find it. You may feel like something is wrong because what used to bring you joy no longer makes your heart sing. If you feel stuck, it could be because you are focused on what you think you should do instead of what you really truly want to do. Praise God. So what do you do? Psalms 37, 4 says, delight in the Lord. Praise God. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. As you delight yourself in the Lord, he is going to give you the desires of your heart. Praise God. Instead of focusing on what you should do, give yourself permission to do what you want to do. This may mean saying no to some people or obligations that once made sense to you. The more you prioritize God and yourself, you, you know, your own needs, the easier your life will be and the less stuck you would feel. Glory be to God. Number four, okay. feeling numb or sense, sense of lack of meaningless connections, feeling numb to life and constantly wondering what's the point? What's the point? What's the point to life? Is this really all there is? Focusing on a sense of meaningless only accelerates your, your hopelessness. It's going to only accelerate, accelerate, accelerate. I let, I wanted to use that word accelerate. I was feeling led to use it as a car. You know how you hit the gas and you're going fast. That's what you're doing. So you're only accelerating by focusing on that, on things that are, are meaningless. It's going to accelerate your hopelessness. So instead of focusing on meaningless and being hopeless, do something about it. Do something about it. You want to change. You want something different. You have to do something different. Praise God. So, you know, I remember there was one time that I remember um, my, my husband and I, my family, we were born and raised Catholic and we, we used to go to church every Sunday. And one day we were there and uh, we were just there in, in church and we were just like, God, there's got to be more to God than this. There's got to be more to God than coming to church for one hour a day and, and that's it. There was no power. There was no conviction. There was, there was just nothing. We were, we were just like, wow. You know, you just come to church and say, okay, I did my duties. I came to church and that's it. I can go ahead and live my life and do whatever I want. And, and throughout the day, it was, just, it was just nothing. And I was just like, me and my husband, we discussed and we put it in prayer. And the Lord just, he just drew us into a deeper relationship with God. Um, we attended a Christian church. My daughter was part of a youth group and our relationship just grew in such a fast pace. I mean, we, we went from just reading about God to having a relationship with God. And that's why I tell you, that's why it's so important that, um, you know, what I do is not the things that I do is not for me to be saved, but because I'm saved. I do the things that I do. Glory be to God. So that's why the Lord has shown me who he is. And I know he's real. I know he exists. I mean, I have over 40, over 40 prophetic dreams on YouTube recorded over 25 in my book, Godly Dreams, your seat at the table that you can pick up on Amazon. I know for a fact that the Lord exists. I know he, he's real. I know he, he moves in such a mighty way, praise God. And so that people think I'm crazy because of the vision that I have out there, glory be to God. It, they they get maybe intimidated and be like, this is huge, this girl's nuts, but guess what? It's even going to be bigger than what I'm saying it is because God, what God gives us is even bigger than what we could ever even imagine or even think of. So praise God for that. Amen. So um, as we started having that relationship with God, God just threw us on a fast train for his glory. And we just, we haven't stopped since then. And I am so happy and blessed. I mean, I have a joy and peace through no matter what storm we could possibly be going through, you may be saying, this girl doesn't have nothing in her life, no problems, no nothing. The thing is, is that I know who my God is, praise God. And I know if he's for me, it doesn't matter who or what's against me, glory be to God. So we just started having a relationship with God and our life changed in such a mighty way, praise God. And I give God all the glory and honor for that. So what do we do? So what do we do if you're feeling stuck and, and numbness and saying how I was saying one day, is this it? 
Is this all to life than this? Is that is that it? There's no conviction, no power, no nothing. I want us to turn to Philippians 3, 15, 21 says, so let's keep focus on the goal. Let's keep focus on the goal. Those of us who want everything God has for us, if any of you have something else in mind, something less than total commitment, God will clear your blur vision. You'll see, you will see it yet. Now that we're on the right track, praise God, let's stay on the right track. It says, let's stay on it. Stick with me, friends. Keep, keep track of those you see running the same course, headed the same goal. There are many out there taking other paths, choosing other goals, and trying to get you to go along with them. I warn you of them many times. Sadly, I'm having to do it again. All they want is an easy street. They hate the, they hate Christ's cross, but easy street is a dead end street. Those who live there make their belly, their gods, their blench, their blenches, their praises, and they can think, they can think of it, their, their appetites, praise God. But there are far more to life for us. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. We're citizens, praise God, of a high heaven. We're waiting to arrive. The, we're waiting on the arrival of the Savior, the, the Master, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Who will transform our earthly bodies into glorious bodies like his own. He'll make us beautiful and whole with the same powerful skills by which he is putting everything as it should be under and around him. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I just love God's word. Having a relationship with God, my brothers and sisters, will help you, will help you focus on your purpose and passion. If you feel drained, you are, you probably haven't been giving enough time and energy to God and to your passion. Number five, feeling mentally and physically drained this is something a res this is sometimes a result of putting your energy and thinking about and what the things that you're thinking about is is just all negativity. It's about everything that you think is negative. Maybe you don't like your job, but you don't know what you want to do in life. Maybe you used to love your current partner but no longer feel that connection. If you feel exhausted from just living, you're probably stuck. Praise God. You're probably stuck and I'm showing you how to get unstuck. And again, I'm talking to those who are not married because if you're married, you work on that relationship. As long as if, you know, you guys are married, you got married through the made that com com um, communion, that that um commitment through God, through the eyes of God, you you Work on it and pray on it and just keep praying for each other. Remember, being married is, is, is like what Jesus did. You're dying to yourself and you're, you're there to constantly please. I'm sorry. I'm going off track, but I'm feeling led to do this. You're constantly there to please that other person. That person's constantly there to please you. And if you have that mindset constantly, you will be happy. You will be happy. You're there to, a lot of times we go into a marriage and this is probably going to be another topic, but a lot of times we go into a marriage on what can that person do for me? What can that person do for me? Or even going into a church, whatever a relationship with God, what can that person do for me? And when you start thinking, you change your mindset, what can I do for that person? You're going to see how your relationship is going to change in a whole nother level. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, and start by praying for that person. Hallelujah. So number five, so if you're feeling stuck, physically, mentally drained, what do you do? What do you do? Matthew eleven twenty eight 28, verse 38, verse 30, sorry, says, come to me, all you who are weary, weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon, take my yoke. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And the Holy Spirit saying to read that verse once again. So here we go. Matthew 11, 28 through 30. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke. And learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. 
Focus on your purpose and your passion. If you feel drained, you probably haven't been giving, like I stated earlier, giving enough time and energy to God and to your passion. You may be thinking, well, I don't have the time to do what I love because I'm so tired. But if you prioritize, if you prioritize what you love, you will, it will help you get more energy. And I'm telling you because I love serving God. <laughs> so he gives me a lot of energy to do what he's called me to do. Praise God. So if you start prioritizing and you start doing what you love to do, you're going to get more energy. You're going to feel good. Praise God. We get a natural uh, and morphine fix when we, it's kind of like when you're running for those who run, they get this, this natural joy for joggers because we get a natural fix from doing what we love. What we love. So when we prioritize our passion, you will get energy and clarity. Praise God. Uh, amen. Number six, you don't feel valued or understood. Wanting support from loved ones and those closest to you is important. Yes, I know. I know because I've been there and I'm going through it myself. Praise God. Um, so I thank God as for me and my household, we shall serve the Lord. Glory be to God. But I know how important that is to have the support of your family. And that's why I'm in the area of Melrose Park. All my family, and I'm speaking to you guys in the Melrose Park area. I mean, I have so many family and friends that we can fill up probably two churches. And um, it, it's I'm praying for you guys constantly. I'm in the area. The Lord brought me to you guys. But if you guys are not listening to what I'm saying, the verse that the Lord has given me, you smack those the dust off your sandals and you keep going. So I'm in the area right now and I'm reaching out to my family, my brothers and sisters in Melrose Park. I'm not going to be there for always. The Lord is opening the door. I'm walking into the vision where God has called me to do. I pray that as the Lord is tugging, and I know, I know, I know, I know. He's been tugging at your heart, and he's been telling you, go to the church. He's been telling you to visit. He's been telling you to go, go, go. But you've been coming up with excuses after excuses. And the Lord is saying, no more, no more. I am there for a reason. I'm reaching out to that area. So anybody in that surrounding area, come out and visit us Why we are there. Praise God. So you may feel stuck because that support is missing. That support is missing. But God valued you so much that he sent his, he sent his only begotten son to pay the ultimate price for your sins. Glory be to God. And that's in John 3, 16. For God so loved the world. Hallelujah, that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but shall have eternal life. Praise God. So what do we do? What do we do? Hallelujah. Instead of allowing outside influence to determine your focus, focus forward. Focus forward on supporting and believing God and yourself. What God is giving you, what God is telling you, what God has has placed in your heart. Believe, believe, believe in it. Praise God. Number seven, you compare yourself with others and envy their happiness. You compare yourself with others and envy their happiness. When you're stuck, it's easy to compare yourself with others and start to think everyone else is happier and more together than you. Listen to Galatians 6, 4, 6 says, Do not compare yourself with others. Just look at your own work to see if you have done anything to be proud of. You must each accept the responsibility that is your own. Glory be to God. So what do we do? Recognize that it is your ego. It is your ego. Listen, I want to make sure that you guys in, listen to this. Because he, this is the thing that's keeping you from doing what you need to do. Glory be to God. Recognize that it is your ego, your ego, your fear-based mind that wants you to feel less than instead of focusing on others. Ask yourself what brings you joy and follow the joy to happiness. Commit to God and you will find true joy. Praise God. Hallelujah. We are always growing and changing. Sometimes we hold on to old habits because they're comfortable. You may be holding on to an old habit job relationship out of fear of the unknown. And sometimes we do that. We don't want to go there because we're afraid of what happens if, what if, what if, what if. Many of us stay in situations long past, long past expiration dates, long past expiration dates, and settle into experiences that don't soothe our souls. 
because we are, uh, you know, we're just, you know, we're, we're just, uh, we're just scared, reluctant to the experience of that discomfort that, that brings when we start thinking with our head instead with our heart, we start getting uncomfortable. And so we don't want to go there. We start to fear the choices that we make could set us back, set us back in, you know, or even send our life off course. When it comes to making a decision, many of us are focused on the worst case scenario. So many of us do that. We become paralyzed only once, and this is as a child of God, because if you're not a child of God, you can get in trouble. And we're talking about the, as a child of God, as the Holy Spirit's leading you, he's going to guide you. Because only once, once you start doing that, once you start, you realize, once fear starts coming, because fear is not of God. Fear is just to keep you from growing. Fear is to keep you from doing what God has called and created you to do. You know, but that is not of God. You know, God is not a God of fear. So we need to get a hold of that. And only once, you know, we start to um, do what we're, we're feeling, what we want to do, the desire, and whatever God has placed in our heart. Only once we break through and we start to do it, praise God. So only once we, 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 get, we get past that, we do it anyways, we can recognize the inner power, praise God, that's inside of us. Praise God, the Holy Spirit. Feeling stuck oh, is always an opportunity to re realign and refocus. Always. So whenever you're feeling stuck, is always an opportunity to, you know, feel you're, you're able to realign yourself and refocus. My brothers and sisters, the Lord is telling you, do not fear. Do not fear. Don't fear no matter what you're going through. No matter, you know, the Lord is taking you back to school, a new job, a new, a new ministry, whatever it is to evangelize, to preach, whatever it is, whatever the Lord is calling you to do. The Lord is calling you to do something because we are all here called to do something. We're not just here to be here. We're not just here to just live a happy dandy life and not do anything. The Lord is, we are here for a reason and we are here for a purpose. So as a child of God, the Lord is calling you to do something. As you start to have a relationship with God, the Holy Spirit is going to start leading you and guiding you. A lot of times fear is going to kick in and say, I cannot talk to that person. I cannot do that. I cannot do this. I don't have the means. I don't have the funding, you know, like me, you know, to establish a church to do what God is calling me to do. I'm just moving in faith and I know, I know what's going to happen. God is, God is a God that provides and I know know he's going to come through. I know it's going to come, it's come to pass. I know God has always shown me all the time. Every There's not one time that he's let me down, praise God. So I know that it's going to come to pass what he's given me, praise God. And that's why I go out with the confidence, with the bonus, because I know that my God goes before me. He goes, he's behind me. He's in every side of me. So I know when I go, I know when I speak, is the Holy Spirit leading me? Is the Holy Spirit guiding me? Is the Holy Spirit protecting me? I don't have fear because I know if my God is for me, it doesn't matter who's against me. It doesn't matter who thinks I'm crazy. It doesn't matter who says her vision is nuts. She's crazy. There's no way in fear and be like, I feel bad for her. You don't have to feel bad for me. God is going to be, God's a big God. And I do not put God in a little box. Praise God. I know what God can do. I know what he can do. And so he's telling you today, my brothers, this is do not fear. Do not fear no matter what God has given you, whatever he's placing in your heart. That's a time to embrace that and time to embrace new changes. Realign, realign what's, what's taking place and refocus, refocus. And you're feeling stuck. It's a time to refocus and do what God is calling you to do. So he's saying, do not fear. Isaiah 12, 2 says, God is my savior. I will trust him and not be afraid. The Lord gives me power and strength. He is my savior. Praise God. Isaiah 41, 10. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will straighten you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Praise God. Isaiah 41, 13. For I, the Lord your God, will hold your right hand. Praise God. Saying to you, fear not, I will help you. Praise God. I'm going to end this with a prayer. Praise God. I thank you guys for tuning in. I thank you guys for coming on in. I'm going to pray for each and every one of you guys. Before I do that, if there's something specifically that you want me to pray for, type it in the bottom. If I don't get to it right now, believe me, I'll get to it and I'll be praying. Um, in my long time with God, I'll be praying for you throughout the 
you know, the days as the Holy Spirit leads me, praise God. And so right now, I'm just going to ask, I don't like to leave without giving you the opportunity. If you have not accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, my brothers, this is truly none. There's none whatsoever. There's no better life to live than to live for God. To live for God. And, and, and the, the message that he's given me for this coming week, I'm going to be talking about is earthly treasures. This, you know, to store up, you know, an earth, you know, earthly treasures. And that's, that's the word he's given me. And so that's the message he's placing in my heart to bring together, praise God, for his glory. But I want to ask you, if you have not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, my brothers and sisters, I am a living testimony, living witness that God is real. God exists. And we can't continue going over after, you know, messages that are going to help you feel good. God is going to convict you. God is going to convict you through his word. His word's powerful. His word's powerful. When you're really in a place where it's really God's word is being sent, God's word is going forth, you're going to feel convicted. And you're probably going to be like, man... The enemy is going to keep you away from there because he doesn't want you to grow. He want he doesn't want you to grow. He doesn't want you to, for your life to change and to do what God has called you to do because he wants to keep you stuck. Praise God. So I know for a fact, I am 110% sure that God is real. God exists. He's shown me so many times. Glory be to God. I've seen his power. I, I just live. I mean, I could be in a dark room and start praying and I feel the light, the, the Holy Spirit just on me, this, this power of light. Like if there's, I'm in a light room, praise God. And, and the presence of the Holy Spirit is just so powerful. And just the things that I've been through with him and just my prayer time, it's just, it's just so amazing. I can't even go there and explain it. But I want to share with you that there's truly no better life to live than to live for God. There's truly none whatsoever. I know that we are doing the right thing because so many people say, you know, you know, they don't, they just believe in God and they don't believe in Jesus. I know the Lord's convicted me so many times that he's placed in my heart of what we're, what, what's going on and everything, everything that the Lord has given me out of 40 prophetic dreams. I go to the Bible and I didn't even know most of them, pretty much all of them. And I would go to the Bible and the Bible will back up the dream that he's given me. There's no way I can do that. There's no way I can even come up with it. I can't even take the credit. Praise God. And I'm so excited. I'm working on book number two. It's going to be a children's book for God be the glory. And you guys are going to be so amazed by it. It's going to blow your mind away. Um, so anyways, I, I want to pray with you. If the Bible says, the word of God says, the Holy Bible says, and um, Romans 10 says, if you confess with your mouth and if you believe with your heart that Jesus is the Lord of your life and accept him, you will be saved. You will be saved. So right now, I'm going to pray with you because this is so important. Our, our mouth is, is powerful. The words that come out of our mouth is powerful. It's life and death. So as you confess with your mouth and, and start declaring who God is and asking for forgiveness, the Lord, the Holy Spirit comes into your heart and he's going to make it a home and he's going to dwell in you and he's going to start giving you the, his desires so that you can do all that you work really called and created to do. So at this moment, if you haven't made that confession, if you haven't um, took that step of faith, I'm going to lead and guide you. And I just pray that you follow praise God. And I thank you each and every person that's on here. And for those who went the extra mile sharing, God bless you. Love you guys. So right now, just pray with me for those who are on here. Pray with me for the ones who are following along. Praise God. Heavenly Father, we come before you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Father God, as I come before you, and Father God, I just ask, Lord Jesus, I come before you in the name of Jesus, and I ask, Father God, for forgiveness. I ask for you to forgive me, Lord, for anything bad I said, I did, or I even thought of, Father God. Father God, I come before you and I just believe in you. I, I believe that you pay the ultimate price to wash away my sins, Father God. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Holy Spirit, come into my heart and make it your home, Father God. Dwell in me so that I can do all that I was called and created to do for your glory. Give me the desires to seek you. Give me the hunger to read your word and to be in your presence. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Yeshua, our Lord and Savior, and praise God. So at this moment, if it was your first time saying that prayer, I ask that you continue seeking God, 
reading his word. The Holy Spirit is the best teacher. The Holy Spirit is the best teacher. Read God's word. Even if it's five minutes a day, read God's word. Listen to music. Start worshiping him. Living for God, my brothers, this is not just once a week. It's 24-7, 24-7. It's all day long, all day long talking to God, having him in the midst of your everyday relationship. Glory be to God. So I thank you for those who are tuning in. I just ask that um, at this moment, I'm just going to lead you in prayer. And I'm going to pray for each and every one that came on here. I thank God for you. I thank God for what God is doing in your life. I thank God at this moment that he's breaking through chains and, and boundaries and things that's been holding you back. And the time that you felt that you were stuck in this hole, that you're no longer there. Glory be to God. And at this moment, I'm just going to pray with you. Praise God. And I ask my husband to join me in prayer. He's online. So, and everybody else, let's pray together as one body. Hallelujah. Father God, I thank you, Lord, for my brothers and sisters all around the world, Father God. Because you told me, Father God, you placed in my heart that Zion Spiritual Church is a church of many nations, Father God. As we come together as one body, Father God, I thank you for my brothers and sisters, Father God. And I pray, Father God, I intercede for them, Father God. I pray, Lord Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, Father God, I pray, Lord Jesus, that at this moment, they have no feeling of feeling stuck, any bonds, any anything that's been keeping them down, and Father God, and whatever decisions that they're having to make, Father God, I pray for clarity. Father God, I pray that you open their mind for wisdom and understanding. I pray, Father God, that this message was a blessing to them, Father God. I pray that this message produces much fruit for your glory, Father God. Father God, I thank you, Lord, for their life, Father God. And I thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do throughout this message and for what you're going to do as you're constantly pouring life into them, Father God. I ask, Lord Jesus, for you to breathe your breath into their body, Father God, into their nostrils. Father God, that they just it just stirs up, stirs up their gifts, Father God. I, I pray for the fire of the Holy Spirit to just move in them in such a mighty way, Father God. Awaken them, Father God. Awaken them from their sleep. Awaken them from their slumber. Father God, open their eyes, Father God, to see, Father God, what you're doing. Open their ears to hear, Father God, your word, Father God, in their hearts to receive you like never before. Father God, I pray that you continue giving them desires, Father God, of your heart, Father God, of your will, Father God. I pray that all the time they come to you, Father God, is to line up, Father God, your their will with your will, Father God, to line it up, Father God. We thank you, Jesus, for your word. We thank you, Father God, for your love, your mercy, your grace, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for who you are and all that you do, Father God. We thank you, Father God. We, we love you. We praise you in Jesus' mighty name, in the name of Yeshua, our Lord and Savior. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. I love each and every one of you guys. I have you guys in prayer. If you guys need a prayer, prayers inbox me praise god inbox me and let me know and i will come in agreement with you we're supposed to come together we're one body and we're supposed to be praying for each other and so if you have something that you're going through listen to this message if you're feeling stuck go over all those steps i gave you i know i know there's going to be breakthrough in your life through this message i thank you so much for joining me and once again i ask that you please hit that share button my name is pastor narina guire author of golly dreams your seat at the table our church is located at the moment in melrose park for those people that are in the melrose park area you want to take advantage that we are there so come out and join us come out and visit us and um, we're at 3000 West. The, ad the street is S-O-F-F-E-L. And that's Melrose Park every Sunday at 3 o'clock. Join me on SOAR Radio every Wednesday. That's SOAR Radio, S-O-A-R Radio, every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Central Time. That's online radio all over the world. You can listen to it, download the app, and every, every um, Wednesday tune in, which throughout the week they also have all the other... Um, Christian and gospel stations that they will be a blessing to you as well. Keep it in prayer. We're moving into the vision that God has given us. Right now we reached out to about 50 pastors, 50 churches, and we do know that God is going to move in such a mighty way. And so keep it in prayer. If you guys would love to be part of what God is doing, what he's given me to do for his glory, if you want to sow a seed, it will be a blessing. Come on. There's there's a couple things on my Facebook page. There's a PayPal. My son, God bless his heart he did a gofundme account um trying to raise money to establish a barn that the lord's placed in my heart he's given me the vision 
to do a church out of a barn. And I'm moving into that vision this year, 2019. So I thank you for your love, your support, your prayers. And I thank you for going the extra mile and sharing it. Again, it's not about me. It's for God. To God be the glory. We are to reach out to the multitude for his glory. There's, we're, we're going to come a time that the time that we're living is against rebellion, worshiping idols, all this stuff that's going on. You really, really need to dive into God's word and really have a relationship like never before with him. Praise God so that you can know the truth. And I'm going to leave you with John 8, 32. You should know the truth and the truth will set you free. Much love and blessings. Take care, everyone. Have a blessed, blessed night until next week. God bless you. Love you guys. Bye-bye.